So I now have the pleasure of inviting our colleague, uh, Mr. Shombit Paul, for the next session on uh, fact checking. Is everyone ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Can I get yes, sir. So this is going to be a very, very interesting session on how to find out whether, you know, and uh, we, we did a small session on uh, how to find out whether data is real or not, but this is uh, much beyond that. This is about, you know, how any information is correct or not. And many of you might have seen Sambit Pal on, on, on some screen or the other. So he's a multimedia journalist and media educator. He's currently teaching at the International School of Broadcasting and Journalism, MIT ADT University, Pune. He heads the broadcasting department there. And before that, he started at the Indian Institute of Mass Communication, Denkanal. You met uh, the director of INC Denkanal yesterday, Professor Minal Chatterjee, and he's been his colleague and his student as well. So he has experience of working broadcast and digital media for one and a half decades. He was an assistant editor at ABP Digital. He was the bureau head of Times Now in Kolkata. And he also worked with various Bengali channels like uh, Star Ananda and Kolkata TV. He started his career with Z News and he continues to contribute to various websites and publications. An alumnus of Presidency College Kolkata, he's a graduate in political science and he did his master's in international journalism at Cardiff University, UK, under the Shielding Scholarship. He's also a part of the trainers network of the Google News Initiative in India and regularly holds workshops on fact checking and fake news verification. His research interests are hyperlocal digital media, emerging technologies and journalism social media and political communication and misinformation. So he's a very experienced multimedia journalist and, and editor turned media educator. Uh, welcome, Shambit. Uh, I'm sorry I took six minutes of your time, but... Uh, I was actually listening to you and uh, we don't get much opportunity to listen to you. So I was actually listening to you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Umar Shankar Pandey, sir, uh, and for such a nice introduction that you have given to me. Uh, so now uh, let me start with my session. Uh, okay, uh, students who are, I mean, this will be an interactive session. So please do respond if I'm, you know, asking something or if you have any question, just stop me and ask me, right? So it cannot be just a one way communication. I know that uh, some of you are, uh, you know, are in the mood to have your dinner probably. So I don't mind you having your dinner, but just be participating. That's my request. Uh, we will go straight into the session today on fact checking. Now, before that, uh, how many of you have come across some kind of fake news? Have you ever come across any kind of fake news? No? Yes, That's sir. a very simple question. Please answer and keep up in that. It's very important for you know you to just keep interacting because this is right. That's a request from all of us. Right. Yes, uh, Shugyan, you were saying something. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So what, what was that? What what did you find out and how did you find out that is fake? Yeah. Or probably you did not know that it was fake. No, actually, when the war started uh, recently. Uh, in between Russia and uh, Ukraine. At the time, I had received one photo uh, through social mm -hmm. media that uh, okay. some small, small kids uh, means, uh, uh, wishing their uh, soldiers. Soldiers are on, yes. uh, on the tanks and they are just, uh, uh, say, just uh, saying that bye-bye uh, like that. I had shared on my social media, uh, on my Facebook profile, but later on it came uh, from Facebook that it's uh, fact checking they did, and that that is uh, old photo. Right. Yeah. So you you actually fell in the trap of fact. Uh, yes. No? yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we all do, uh, you know, come across such. I'm sure that you know some of you have come across such uh, content, be it image, video, or just information. Uh, which you shared with your near and dear ones and friends and then uh, later you have found out that that was fake or probably you haven't realized that that was fake uh, but you still shared it and you were happy that uh, you had shared it so it happens with all of us so as Shugyan was starting with uh, 
the 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 content that is going viral on uh, social media on uh, this war i will show you some photographs and let's see if you can detect uh, normally with your you know natural uh, understanding and natural uh, uh, way of looking at it whether those are fake or not so before that let me just tell you that what we are going to discuss that uh, in this session in one one hour or so that what is fake news why and how does fake news spread and what impact does it have on us and most importantly i think for all of you there are some basic tools that you can uh, you know use to fact check an image a video and i'll of course share some uh, you know clues and tips on how to fact check any information that you receive, receive. Uh, and i understand that you know most of you are going to become journalist uh, or be in the field of communication or even if you're not in the field of communication as a common citizen also you need to be aware because we are being overwhelmed with misinformation disinformation uh, what we call as you know fake news uh, in in common parlance okay can you tell us that if this is if this picture is a fake or real so this is a uh, an image that's a video grab that i've taken uh, it is claimed to be from the war in uh, uk ukraine what do you think is it fake or is it true so these are like night vision camera was used to get this picture and it is said that uh, you know these are like uh, the the russian missiles that are hitting ukraine and this is the picture that that was taken so do you think this is fake or uh, for you know true anyone not able to know not able to understand yes. sir kindly repeat the question please is it true or for i mean is it true or false this picture this is a video grab which claims that this is a picture from ukraine and when the russian missiles were hitting ukraine uh, cities this picture was taken at the time of course uh, in the evening so do you think that this is true no sir i think why why do you think that this is not true no reason just like that sir amar mone hocche eta fake kanona erokom situation e ekhane over mane sundor dekhte lagche missile pole nishoy eto ta sundor dekhte lagbe na kono ekta bhoya bako ar tini tulchen taro to prane bhoy thaka uchit mane erokom bhabe porche to mone hocche fake acha thik ache dekha jak i'll i'll show you um, i'll show you whether this is uh, you know fake or true a little while later Let, let's look at this picture what do you think about this is claim to be from uh, ukraine again do you think this is from ukraine what do you think about this picture quickly so i think this is fake too this is fake why do you think so like the way the photographer clicked the picture with the flash in front in a very photogenic way i don't think anybody would capture war pictures like that okay yeah that's a good observation okay let's see uh, some other photographs and i'll come to come back to it and tell you whether this is true or false okay this is uh, said to be a photograph from ukraine and uh, this man is uh, is is going to fight the war for ukraine and uh, he is uh, saying goodbye to his daughter what do you think about this and this is apparently from the city of kim is it fake or I do you think, think that this is a true photograph the true video this is the true photograph because i've seen the video i've seen the video where mm -hmm. this the actual incident happened So yes, it's true. Yes, I've also seen the video. It's I think oh, the video. Great, great. Okay, I'll come back to this as well. 
वट यू थिंक अबाउट दिस दैट यूक्रेन में जो भारतीय घर और गाड़ी पर तिरंगा लगा रही है और तिरंगा लगा लेंगे उनसे रूसी सैनिक कुछ नहीं करेंगे so they are saying that if no uh, this uh, general of the army of defense russian federation has declared that in ukraine if uh, any indian wears the indian flag in his house or in the car then the russian soldiers will not attack them so what do you think about this true or false be quick be quick Huh? Is this true? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Then yes. please do, do respond. So don't. <laughs> you don't know? No, sir. Is doubtful. Okay. Okay. I'll. I'll... Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Sir, so, that we doubtfully. Doubtful, Munir. Okay, fine. What about this one? The, this is a candidate from uh, UP election, the recently concluded UP election. Gopal Chaudhary, who who had told uh, the the um, media persons that I'm fighting for a personal agenda, that he wanted to make money by contesting election. uh so it was shared on february 1st this year what do you think about this do you think that this is uh, you know a true story that this man an independent candidate from up uh wanted to fight the election to make money ha huh? Say something. Yes, no. What What do you think? What's your gut feeling saying? I know that you know it's not easy. Uh, not even easy for uh, us also who are into the fact checking and you know it's working fake. all misinformation. I think it's fake. Sorry. I it's fake. It's fake. Yeah. Okay. You know, the it's logo fake. of the coin is not equal to the original logo. I feel. okay that's good good observation but i'll i'll come to the reality of all those photographs now okay the truth about this one is that it is not uh it is not a videograph from ukraine russia war this is apparently a video game which was shared widely on social media claiming that this was uh from from russia okay i'll just try and show you if i can uh the the video can i show you okay it's little slow okay it's taking time okay Can you see the video in, uh, that was posted yes, on Instagram? Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah? Yes, sir. And it was posted on October six, twenty twenty one, when there was no war, right? So this is a, a video game that is claimed to be a video game, but it is being claimed as uh, footage from Russian war. Okay. Then uh, we talked about. okay this is a uh, actually in an original photograph from uh, ukraine it was uh, taken by news agency and this is a man coming out of an uh, commuter uh, coming out of a house which is uh, which is which was attacked in this war so this is true even though yeah i mean i, I appreciate those who had said that this looks very photogenic and this cannot be a picture from the war zone but uh, it was uh, a picture that was taken in the war zone probably um, it was after the attack and there was no threat of immediate attack on that area probably 
and the photographer could take this photograph. But uh, this is true. Now, this photograph, so somebody said that uh, he had seen it or you, you people have said that some of you have seen it. And I won't blame you because uh, a lot of mainstream media had uh, shared this photograph. Rather, this, this video where this man, the father of this girl, was bidding goodbye to, uh, to, to his daughter. But the truth is that this is the man who was not going to fight for Ukraine. So he is an Ukrainian, but he is uh, part of that uh, Republic of Densebo, uh, sorry, Don, Donbass, which was declared independent by the Russian government. And he was going to fight the war against Ukraine for Russia. And this uh, families were being given a safe passage to Russia. And this man was bidding goodbye to his daughter and other family members, I guess. And it was posted by Ivan uh, Prikotko, who is a mayor of uh, this particular uh, area in Eastern Ukraine. Right. So this is, in a sense, uh, half truth. So they are Ukrainian, true. But this man was not going to fight the war for Ukraine. Rather, he was going to fight the war against Ukraine. So uh, this is this is half truth we can say, right? So we will come to it that how it spread, how it spreads, how the you know uh, fake news is deliber deliberately uh, you know put out on mainstream media. Sometimes by mistake they put it out, and this this happens, right? But why did you why did you believe in this photograph or the video? Those of you who had said that you know you had seen it and you actually believed in this video, right? What do you think is the reason why you believed in this photograph? Why why did you find this photograph to be true or the video to be true? So I guess because of the emotion that was related exactly. to the video. Exactly. So you were emotionally charged and you could see, yeah, and you can see that, yes, this man is actually bidding goodbye. Uh, some of you must have, you know, seen it on mainstream media uh, posts, uh, on social media, of course. So you were emotionally charged. So we'll come to it and I'll tell you that, you know, what are the reasons why we generally tend to believe uh, in such kind of content and emotion is the basic trigger for us to believe in any content that comes on our way. Okay. Uh, we, we had seen that, you know, there was this Facebook post, uh, Facebook post where the man had claimed that Russian defense, uh, you know, uh, defense army general or someone had claimed that Indian, uh, if somebody wears Indian flag in his house or uh, on, on top of the car in Ukraine, they will not attack them. But that is not true. So there was no such promise by Russian government to Indian government. Rather, there was this advisory that print out Indian flag and paste, uh, you know, prominently on the vehicles uh, and uh, you know buses while traveling in Ukraine. So a lot of students, as you have seen, that were trying to escape this war and you know go out of Ukraine. And this was advisory by uh, the embassy of India in Kyiv, uh, which said that, okay, if you are traveling out of Ukraine and going to a safer place to be rescued by the Indian government, then please do paste uh, the tricolor on your bus or car prominently so that the Indian officials or you know the officials who are coordinating uh, this rescue operation, they could identify you, right? So again, I mean, it was distorted uh, you know, distorted truth, or if I can say so. Okay, this candidate in UP election says he entered politics to make money, fool people. It is true, but he contested the elections five years ago. And the story was five years ago, 
uh, that was published in various news channels, including Quint, even though it was good observation. And we should, as fact checker, as a common citizen also, look at the minute details of any photograph. And, you know, sometimes it, it happens that, you know, there are imposter content where the logo of a news channel or, you know, some other publications are used to fool people. Uh, but that was not the case with this story. This is a true story, but not from this year's UP elections. So an old content was reused and uh, it was, it was, you know, uh, circulated on social media, as you have seen that it was posted uh, in the first week of February this year. But this the original story, as we can see, uh, was carried by uh, Indian Express on 28th of January. 2017. So this is how this happens. Now, what do you think that you fail? Uh, why you fail for or did not fall for this fake news? So uh, one answer was, of course, the emotional reaction. Do you think there are other reasons why you fail for these photographs or you thought that, okay, this is not true? Is there any other reasons why we fall for fake news apart from this emotional charging? No, no answer. Okay. So emotion is the trigger, right? And we get emotional. We get carried away by our belief as well, right? So, uh, if we believe that yes, Russian government can be sympathetic to Indians or the Indian government, then we would probably, you know, uh, believe in that piece of news or that piece of social media post, right? Uh, if we, uh, I mean, the emotion was uh, uh, was one of the reasons why you believed in that video where the father was bidding goodbye to that girl, right? If you are very much allergic to the politicians, you would, you may think that, okay, yes, this Gopal Chaudhary story is correct, which is correct, but this was old content, which was being used, uh, used again uh, with, with a false context in this year's UP election. So there are multiple reasons will come to that, but emotion is what is the main trigger. Apart from emotion, there is speed of information. We know that, you know, we are overwhelmed with information. Information is coming from every corner. You are checking your Instagram feed. Uh, you are getting some information there. You are, uh, you have put notifications uh, of certain app that also keeps on giving you information. Uh, you are, you know, checking your Facebook feed. You, you get so many posts, so many information and, uh, you really don't understand which one to believe in and which one not to believe in, right? Then there is dilution of gatekeeping. So the reasons why, you know, people are tending to believe in, uh, in any content that comes on our way. One is this dilution of gatekeeping. I, I hope that you have learned this, that uh, in any newspaper or any news television, which is professionally run, there's a lot of layers to which I, uh, through which an information passes through. A reporter gets that story, he will tell his chief reporter or the bureau chief, he will approve that story, then you know the senior editors will have a look at it, they will say okay fine we need uh, uh, another quote uh, on this story or we need this information on this story and then the chief editor will take a final call and say okay fine we can carry this story. So there are different you know gatekeepers in the whole ecosystem through which uh, an information uh, you know, passes through and becomes a news and then either it's printed on newspaper or it is, you know, aired on television. So there was a lot of layers of gatekeeping, but nowadays, if you have this, you know, uh, this this smartphone in your hand, you are a reporter. You can click anything, post it uh, uh, on, on social media channels. There is no charge for that. And you can claim that, okay, this is what has happened. But you probably may not, you know, mention the the context properly or the backgrounder, or probably, you know, some people may fool you by 
putting out something which is not related to the event which they are claiming this uh, video or the audio or the picture is from right so this whole gatekeeping process has got diluted because of this uh, social media uh, emergence of social media so everybody can post anything and everything on social media and uh, you tend to believe in everything uh, that comes on your way mostly then editorial bias so you know that you know this uh, tv channel will uh, talk in favor of this political channel sorry political uh, uh, you know part political party this uh, newspaper will write in favor of this political party so you understand these days that there is this editorial bias and sometimes they do spread misinformation without much verification without getting the other side of the story and that that also causes uh, a lot of harm to this whole information ecosystem and we tend to believe in all those things and we fall in the trap of fake news then there is seamless news uh, i i am sure how, uh, you know most of you do not read newspapers how many of you read newspapers how many of you read newspapers okay bharti anyone else monidipta rikta okay two more tirtham good okay that's great i read the news but online sir ha but i'm talking about the hard a uh, hard copy of the newspaper just not e newspaper but even if you are reading e newspaper that's that's fine okay so a lot of lot of people are reading this paper i'm really happy but still you are on the minority yes shruti rikta shakshi srijita so out of you know 71 participants we are here uh, probably you know 10% or you know 20% of us are reading newspaper regularly right these days mostly what happens you you probably you know uh, subscribe to some uh, some some you know news app or you check your news uh, news on instagram sometimes isn't it doesn't it happen how many of you sir link mane uh, e paper link e paper padho ha huh? ha sir link click korle ota mane e paper te padho so link kotha theke pao kothay pao brother kotha theke to bujhlam sir google e pai google e so if i tell you that okay can you tell me what is happening uh, in in uh, in up now so you'll go to google google uh, you know search it on the google and then whatever result you get you will read it right that's that's the uh, you know pattern you follow yes yes sir right no sir anandabad yeah. patrika r ekta link ache click korle but din ओपिनियन उज बिकॉज we keep on getting as as things happen we keep on getting news uh, around uh, around us right so we don't understand whether it's a opinion piece whether it's someone's opinion that has been expressed there or is it hardcore news but if you read newspaper there is a hierarchy right so you know on uh, you know page number 1 there will be all news uh, in editorial page there will be only opinion in sports page you have sports news but if you are following any app or any website for that matter they will keep on updating as things happen uh, and you know the stories will come up one after another so you want to understand whether this is a opinion piece whether this news so it's it's very difficult these days but if you can identify that nothing like it try to do that that is what is required and people again fall for fake news because of this uh, seamless news pattern they follow on websites or app and then of course there's free for all social media that that causes a lot of lot of problem right and there has been a huge change in technology storytelling pattern 
consumption of news pattern so all of us are busy uh, you know busy people we use our mobile phone we we keep on scrolling uh, the news feed and whatever we get to see we just read that if we uh, get to see any article we probably do not read through the whole article we just you know scan through it get some information in bits and pieces and we are happy so this is how we consume news and that's why we may not get the whole picture about an event right so why i'm saying all these things that you need to be careful while you are consuming news uh, because you are uh, you know you are going to be journalist some of you must be working somewhere or interning somewhere uh, and even if you are not again i'm saying that even if you are not into the business of news as a common citizen also you need to be very very careful and these are the threats that i have just mentioned which is causing a lot of problem now coming to disinformation right so what is fake news and what is uh, you know misinformation disinformation can somebody tell me what is misinformation so all these things together are called fake news but there is another view that you know news cannot be fake right if you are saying this is news we are talking about verified information news cannot be fake right so that is one uh, you know argument that we have uh, among the academicians and that is what we should follow but again i'm using this term just for our understanding because most of us refer to any kind of misinformation disinformation or malinformation as fake news now can somebody tell me what is the difference between misinformation and disinformation then i'll come to malinformation anyone what is misinformation any try any guess please feel free i mean don't feel shy i'm not going to mind information uh, yes sir uh, yeah. misinformation is something which is unintentional okay when we provide any false information but unintentionally and this information is something which is given intentionally and uh, mal information is uh, like there should be a gap between misinformation and uh, uh, what is what is we call that unintentional disinformation so that is what mal information is okay excellent polony excellent misinformation and dis disinformation you are bang on mal information is a little different from what you just said but i'll come to that very good so misinformation as polony said that sharing and forwarding false in false information sorry i'm coming to disinformation right yeah so disinformation is sharing and forwarding false information intentionally so if somebody is uh is you know circulating some information or news or some picture or video knowing that this is false but still that person is circulating it and why they circulate i'll just come to that then it is called disinformation right for example this is a mock photograph and it was circulated widely on social media but uh, the person who circulated it first knew that it is mock and this is uh, this is this this actually accounted for uh, disinformation now why do people uh, you know circulate disinformation to serve political religious business or any other vested interest so they have certain interests that they want to create some hatred against the opposition political party they they may you know circulate it intentionally they may uh, circulate disinformation because they want to create some religious divide in the society or they want to preach their religious ideals or ideology business of course i mean sometimes you get certain you know content if you click on that uh, then they get more page views and somebody gets more money with more page views right so this can be multiple reasons uh, you know there can be multiple reasons why people do uh, circulate this information so they have some vested interest to create uh, you know some kind of divide hatred uh, or you know make profit out of it by Uh, circulating disinformation now misinformation is 
sharing false information, believing that to be true without any malintention. So I don't have any malintention. I believe in this photograph. Uh, and I think that, okay, I can share it with my friends and I do it. So here is one example. I think during uh, you know Corona, a lot of you had uh, drank boiled garlic water or at least boiled water. Huh? Did you do that? Yes, sir. Yeah. So all of us probably have done that. But trust me, it, it was it was of no use. I had vitamin C uh, uh, regularly. I had some other mixtures, some concoction, drink and all. Nothing helped. I had, you know, uh, COVID attack twice. So so this was wrong. But, you know, if, if you get this kind of information somewhere, you feel like, okay, sharing this may help people, right? So we have that intention that it may help someone else. So maybe I can forward it and that person can be benefited out of it. So this is harmless, but there can be harmful misinformation as well. I'll, I'll show you those uh, examples as well. Now, why do people you know, share misinformation? Because there are some people you must have seen among your friends, family members or someone else that they believe in everything. So whatever you tell them, they will believe. Ha ha, ye to sahi hai, ye to thik hai, eta to thiki bola chis to ye rokmi hote pare, right? And then they share it. Then getting social capital. You must be having some friends who would come and said, "Are tu yeh janish na? Are ami to ke bolchi? Ami to prathom shurla meta." You get to see these kind of friends or not? You must be having at least one such friend in your friend circle. Huh? Of course, yes. Of course, right? Yes, so there are the people who are, yeah. Yes, someone's uh, saying something. No. Okay. So yeah. So you know they want to gain that social capital that okay I am the first person who has got this news, and they tend to fall uh, you know tend to fall for this kind of misinformation and they circulate it uh, among the friends, family members, and all. Some people perform social duty, right? So if I get an information that, okay, from tomorrow, uh, there'll be no bus service between, uh, you know, Goria and Hara, I would probably you know, tend to send it to a friend who is probably, you know, traveling uh, from Goria to Hara or in that route, they are leaving somewhere and they need to use that uh, route and use a bus service. And so I think, okay, this is my duty to share it, right? So this is a social duty that people perform, but you know they don't understand or they don't verify the information first, uh, but they just you know forward it immediately so that someone will be benefited out of it, but they fall for misinformation. And then there is pure fun. Have you heard about that? You know, alcohol could kill coronavirus. Did you hear about yes, that? Sir. Yeah. Did you believe in that? No. Some of no, you sir. No? no, sir. Yeah, but we used to make this fun, huh? That alcohol se to pura yes, jaya, sir. Corona, corona, right? But some people probably thought it uh, to be true. And I'll show you that, you know, how that caused uh, a lot of misery in different parts of this world. And then comes a poor journalism or reporting unverified information. So, especially the websites which are present at this moment, uh, they want to publish news very fast and they do not get the time to uh, verify content and they just put it out on social media or on their website uh, without verification because they're in competition with social media users. They want to put that news first because if you do not put the news first, then you know others uh, 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 we will just beat you. Nobody will come to your site and read your story. So they're in this race. And then there is race for breaking news as well, uh, where the, most of the time they do not verify the content, just they get something. You would see that you know some, some news channels would put question mark. So they are not yet sure whether this is true or false, but they got it from some sources and trying to put it out. So that's not a good journalism that they do. And you should also abstain from this. Uh, and then again, 
poor journalism of using misleading headlines that also causes a lot of problems so you must have seen that headline is saying something but if you go to the content the content is completely different huh? this also happens means of disinformation may come in various forms and before that i'll just you know i haven't mentioned it so uh, mentioned this in my slide but malinformation is something uh, which is true the information is correct information is true but that is used in certain context to cause some disturbances or harm right with some mal intention that uh, that that news or the information is circulated so you know that okay fine some politician had uh, you know married thrice in his life so this is true but some people would love to use it uh, at at certain time especially you say that during you know election campaign probably that politician is probably contesting the election and uh, the opposition political parties are using that information to malign him right so that is that is called mal information that information is true correct but the timing of using that information is uh, you know ill intended so that is mal information so to defame someone's image or yes. something yes to defame someone's image uh, if if that is used then it is also called mal information right now misinformation and disinformation can come in different formats right different forms apart from the fact that it can come in uh, in in the form of uh, image in the form of video in the form of just text in the form of uh, audio uh, so it can come in different formats but there are different forms of misinformation and disinformation let's have a look at it quickly uh there are seven types of misinformation and dis disinformation what are they uh, i'll just take you through one by one satire fun right so after pm modi's appeal to become atmanirbhar anu malik seen copying his own songs right there's no intention to cause harm but has potential to fool may lead to dangerous situation as well the satire the fun can be dangerous some you know sometimes as well but uh, you know this was uh, In, in this, you, you must have heard about the sites called FakingNews.com, uh, who declare that you know we are a satire site. We 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 do not publish uh, correct news or the uh, you know truth. Uh, there is no truth in the news. We just do it for fun. So you need to be very careful about this kind of sites and this kind of content as well. Then misleading content, misleading use of information to frame an issue or an individual. So Goa Mutra Party. during corona virus so to neutralize the effect of corona virus there will be a gomutra party we know that you know gomutra couldn't cure uh, couldn't cure corona virus right couldn't cure covid so this was misleading so you get certain information uh, which is misleading sometimes now this is the imposter content so someone was saying that you know that quint ka jo logo hai that is Uh, that is looking a little distorted and all so it may not be true and uh, this is this is false but sometimes it happens that you know you get to see this kind of screenshots it it may come on your whatsapp probably so here you can see that it is from aaj tak everything is you know correct but what is the story aaj raat se pure bharat mein sharab band pradhan modi did not announce this right but this was in circulation so you you tend to believe oh this is aaj tak right so it's a screen, screenshot from aaj tak so this is believable but this is not right so always go to the root source of any kind of content where you get the news do not always believe on this kind of believe in this kind of you know content this is called imposter content the genuine source but that is impersonated then fabricated content so this is a world health organization uh, on the on the letter head of world health organization there was this circular which said that there is a protocol and procedure of lockdown period for controlling on most dangerous virus step 1 you have one day a uh, lockdown step 2 you have 21 days lockdown then after 5 days you have step 3 of 28 days lockdown so as if you know world health organization had issued this but they did not they in fact came out 
uh, with with a disclaimer saying that okay we haven't issued any such protocol for lockdown but this was in circulation so the content is 100% false and designed to deceive and do harm so this is fabricated content do not always believe in this kind of content even if you are getting to see that this is coming on some organizations later head or maybe some individuals later head then there is false connection when the headlines caption or the image don't relate to the content inside so you may have seen this kind of story coming at the bottom of some articles on on certain websites uh, and here the story says her belly keeps growing doctor sees ultrasound and realizes he messed up you click on it and then you go to this story there was something out of the ordinary about this pregnancy so there is no connection to the headline and the content so this also accounts for misinformation now false context genuine content is used with completely false contextual information so here you can see that some muslim guys uh, because they are wearing uh, you know face topi uh, and they are uh, you know leaking utensils now, now this was in circulation during lockdown uh, saying that you know they are trying to spread coronavirus now this picture is true there is a certain there is certain community in muslims uh, among muslims who does you know who, who do leak uh, you know utensils but at the end of uh, end of any meal because they think that no food should be wasted so this picture is true and they are doing what the claim is but they are not doing it to you know spread coronavirus and if you you know fact check this photograph you would see that this picture was taken long long back before corona broke out right so this was used in false context so this this often happens that you know the picture is true but it is being used in a completely different context which has no connection to this but then manipulated content genuine information or imagery is manipulated to deceive so this was about uh, kim jong to uh who who is a south korean uh, sorry north korean president he was claimed to be dead but this was not the photograph of kim uh, kim jong 2 this was his father's photograph but this was carried by a lot of mainstream media right so i have nothing against any media but you know sometimes they also fall for this kind of false content or fake news so be it this disinformation misinformation as i said the type of false information can cause harm as well for example it may look may look harmless that uh, you you drink or gargle with warm water and salt or vinegar mixed with it this will help you in coronavirus that actually doesn't but that also doesn't cause much harm to your health as, right but there are misinformation which can kill people so we are just talking about this alcohol in iran and in some parts of india as well in telangana i know people drank illicit liquor puch you know this uh, uh, chullu have you heard about that right so people had consumed that and they got killed so this is a figure which i had taken at the time of uh, at that time the figure was this but it went much higher than this so a lot of people got killed believing that you know alcohol can cure coronavirus and they had consumed illicit liquor it was poisonous they got killed so that was misinformation your fun somebody must have believed in it and you know they got killed so this also can happen and as i said that it can come in different formats so this whole wave of false news or fake news that in recent times there are you know certain examples of uh, fake news in different news publications before 2016 as well but this whole rush for this misinformation and the need for fact checking started in 2016 with donald trump's uh, you know elected election in us then in india there was there was rumor of child kidnapping uh, false you know information was roaming uh, was was in circulation people believed in it they had lynched innocent people on the road uh, you know suspecting that this person is a child kidnapper and this was not i tell you isolated incident this happened across the country and just you know some 
some message that was in circulation in WhatsApp and other media and that killed people, many people. More than 30 people were killed uh, um, uh, in suspicion of being the child kidnapper. And in 2020, we know that how World Health Organization director, had, director general had called it infodemic in, in, in consonance with uh, you know, epidemic, right? So this is a bad situation. Now coming to the most important part, what can we do? What can you do, right? So there are certain tools that you can use. What a journalist can do is that, you know, control the emotion and verify the information. So not even, not just journalists, even we non-journalists also can do this and should do this. Whatever content we get, first thing that you do that, control your emotion. Because whenever you get any, any kind of content, just, you know, try to recollect either you are excited or you are angry or you were really happy, you were overwhelmed, or you were, you know, having a sense of hatred against someone or some people, some individual or some people, or it is, you know, a kind of uh, reestablishing your own belief. So these are the emotional reactions that, uh, you know, forces you to fall for false information. So control your emotion first, verify it, go to the original sources there are certain tools i'll show you which you can use to verify your content and then only you follow you know forward it or share it with others because verification is what differentiates journalism from entertainment or any other uh, you know medium of communication so always ask yourself if you're looking at an original content is it original or is it morphed is it manipulated? Is it being circulated uh, in a false context or not? So I was really happy that you know you were looking at those initial photographs or videos, video graphs that I was showing you. You were doubting yourself. So healthy cynicism is what is required out of you to do any kind of fact checking. Look at it, think that whether it's original content or not, when and where was it created? Who publish it? That is very important. Is it a trustworthy source which has who, which has published it? Is it a trustworthy individual who is you know publishing it? But then again, do not trust the most trusted source hundred percent. Doubt it and verify it, cross check it, and then ask why should you report on it? What, do you have any evidence to support? this claim that is being done by this image or any text or not, right? And then use both traditional and online verification method. What are the traditional method? Going to the main source, talking to the persons, talking to the stakeholders. If something has happened in Baliganj, find out if, you know, some eyewitnesses were there or not, try to talk to them. Just see that, you know, who are the uh, people who are involved in this content? If somebody is saying that, you know, Baliganj, uh, there has been a murder in Baliganj, in particular area in Baliganj, find out with police. Do they know it? Is there any report in the police? What exactly happened? Can you just cross check with the eyewitnesses there? If you can go to the spot, go there, talk to, to, talk to them over the phone. So these are all, you know, traditional method of, uh, journalism that we followed when we started and you should always go for original document and see it for yourself whether you know this has come out or not but this is an age of digital uh, you know this is a digital era and we cannot just depend on traditional method we need to depend on tra online methods as well so using various online tools like reverse image search i'll just show you what that is google maps uh, and there are certain other tricks which you can use to verify it online sitting here. If you get one photograph of Putin, the Russian president, uh, who is probably running, and the claim is that, okay, he is running from running away from uh, the presidential palace in Kremlin, and uh, you cannot really you know, get to know whether this is true or false, and you don't have the resources to 
you know go there at this moment but there are certain online method that you can use and find out whether this is true or false right here are some tools and tricks of fact checking let me share with you so you know all of you just try to understand this basic tools that will be helpful first is reverse image search so how do you search on google generally can some, somebody tell me how do you search on google if i ask you to you know find out uh, about mamta banerjee in google what will you do is anyone sir just naam ta likhe uni cm bolle jeta ache right so okhane giye tumi google search e naam likhbe mamta banerjee and then we'll click on it and then you will try to find out about her right in this case you type images.google.com you just type google.com you will get a similar page but there will be no app there is no camera icon but if you type images.google.com you will get something like this a camera icon now what you can do you can just not search by the word or the text right yes is any question anything no okay so in case of you know text search we just you know type text uh, we just uh, you know heard that in you know, mamta banerjee if we want to search about her we will just write down mamta banerjee this is not a search by text but this is a search by photograph so if i have got any photograph say on our on my whatsapp and i want to verify it uh, whether this photograph is true or false i can just you know do this reverse image search i can do it in other search engine as well i'm just showing it on google so you click on this camera icon uh, you get two options paste image url so if you have the image url online you can just paste it or if you have that photo saved on your device then you can just upload an image so i'm just uploading an image which is claimed to be from kashmir okay so this picture of a, a woman who is being dragged by police personnel uh it was claimed that this picture was from kashmir let me just see the truth about this picture so i've just you know uploaded that picture and this is actually talking about kashmir 63 kashmiri kashmir par zulm ho raha hai in pinterest Kash kashmir zulm youtube and then you get similar images out here and kashmir mein sherry and then you get something like an old image from andhra pradesh is being falsely shared and so you click on it so this photograph was fact checked and you get the clue from here so this is the photograph i hope you can see so this was in circulation and people said that this is how police brutality is on the kashmiri youth but originally this photograph was from hyderabad these are the sfi activists there were protesting against certain issues but it was in circulation uh claiming that this was from from uh, kashmir so reverse image search you got the idea any question on this so whenever you get any image try doing it now what will reverse image search help you know <laughs> tell you okay if you are using any chrome browser you don't need to upload that photograph if that if that is there on uh, uh, online you just click right click on it and then search google for image so nowadays you get to see the search with google lens or something you can click on it click on it and it will you know uh, do the same function it will get you the same result uh but what does it do so reverse image search will tell you if the image has been used online earlier or not if someone is sending you a photograph and saying that you know i have just captured this photograph here uh, and you can use it for your news you can do a reverse image search and find out if this photograph was in circulation earlier or not whether it was used in some other context or not right and then if you don't find then you can you may believe but there are other 
uh, you know, uh, methods through which you need to verify that photograph or a video or whatever you get. But at least you can understand whether this was in circulation earlier or not. It may take you to the original image. So as, as I've shown you that this was used in, uh, in, in the context of Kashmir, that photograph, but it was originally from uh, Andhra Pradesh. So you, you may find that and you can find out that if the image has been used in some other context or not, right? So this image was used in Andhra Pradesh and you know it was falsely used in, in the context of Kashmir as well. So these are the things that you can find out of reverse image search. This is one of my favorites. I got this from uh, one of my uh, family members that Dr. Arka Prabhu Sina, doctor of Ames, Delhi, who claimed that, you know, if, uh, if the temperature of, uh, temperature of your area goes above 23 degrees, then the coronavirus cannot survive. Like, so I got this. How many of you get, you know, such kind of uh, information, which you know that those are false on your family WhatsApp group? How many of you get that? You know, this kind I of think it's mostly like most of us receive this video. Most this of you believed it, so you yes. believed in it mm, at first. Like because we were in such an emotional state that we thought, okay, let's try this one and uh, let's practice whatever they're in, like asking us to do but then with time we understood that no not every information that they're presenting to us is true because we are helpless and they're getting this chance to show us everything they can exactly so yeah, we were in that mental state where we believed in this kind of information but you know me being me i just you know did a kind of reverse image search and tried to find out who this person is where what is his credential whether he is capable of you know uh, talking about this or not, and what is the evidence that he had? Uh, what I found out, I'll be surprised to know that this man is not Dr. Arka Prabhasina, number one. His name is Dr. So Shobuch. He is not from Ames, Delhi. He's a Bangladeshi doctor, and he has got a YouTube channel, and he has, you know, used his YouTube channel to, you know, propagate this kind of stuff. So you can see, I had just, you know, uh, put Dr. Arka Prabhasina Ames and I got this kind of results. I did a reverse image search and then I had put this keyword search as well. So Jakir Hoshen Zobuj is his name and he has got all these, uh, you know, videos where he had claimed it. So he is not Arka Prabhasina, he is not from Ames, Delhi and then claims are not supported uh, by any scientific evidence. So there was no evidence of any research or anything. So you need to go through this kind of, uh, you know, verification or uh, this kind of checks where you can get uh, the truth about any photograph. So what are the other tools that you can use? So as I said that, you know, uh, reverse image search is one, you can, you know, add Google Chrome extension and uh, you can just, you know, right click on it, right click on any image and then you can do a reverse image search. There is Vaidu.com, though it is not accessible in India. Vaidu, you know which country is search engine in this is? China. 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 Exactly. Uh, so this is also helpful because China doesn't allow Google to operate in the country. So you may not get Chinese you know, content on Google search. So this is uh, you know better to use Vaidu, but you know, we can't access it right now in India. Then there is Yandex. Can somebody tell me where the Yandex is from? Yandex search engine. Any guess? No? Okay. This is Russian search engine and uh, you can use it if you want to find something related to Russia and Eastern European countries. They are very good with logos and pictures and emblems and all. So if you want to do a reverse image search of any logo or any emblem and all, this is a very good search engine. And of course, if you want to find any content from Eastern European countries, then you can use it. Then there is T9 reverse image search, a similar function that they you know perform. Uh, I hope that you are taking notes. 
then Reva reverse message. So it is helpful. You can add this as a Chrome extension. It is helpful because it can do multiple searches in multiple search engines, uh, you know, simultaneously. So it can do Google uh, search, TNI search, Sidereal search, Yandex search, and Vidu search. So you can choose any one of them, or you can choose all search engines, and that parallelly it can, uh, you know, do a reverse image search or you know search any content automatically, simultaneously in all these uh, search engines. So Revi reverse image search. It does the same, it has the same function as well. Then there is tip. Sometimes you need to crop an image. When you need to crop an image, if there isn't text on the image. So you get this screenshot, right? Uh, and it claims that Italian man who has lost his entire family to coronavirus finally commits suicide at top of a hotel. Now, if you, you know, so this has probably come to you. Suppose this has come to you as an image on WhatsApp. So if you do a reverse image search of this image, then it is likely that you will get the similar kind of results, uh, which is claiming the same thing. But if there is text on any image, try to crop that, crop the uh, you know main image part. And so here I've just taken out the relevant portion. I've done a reverse image search and I get to see this kind of search result. So the first uh, you know result that shows Man jumps to his death from the top of Hotel Valencia Center, but that is in Spain. What is the date? 27 December 2019, when this photograph was uploaded online. This was much before Corona number one. And this, this hotel is not in Spain, but you can always verify and check whether there's just, you know, there is any hotel with the same name in Italy, Italy or not. So these are like you know different you know, multiple levels of verification that you can do, but reverse image search can give you a clue that this is probably false and this was actually false. With the false false context, it was used. So this was the original story. Uh, you can do reverse image search for videos as well. So that was about image, how to verify an image I've just shown you. You can do the same thing for videos. You just need to take take a screen grab from the video and do a reverse image search in the way we have done it for any picture. Try to take a grab where you have a wide angle shot. So there should be a lot of elements in that you know, uh, a screen grab so that it will give you a better result if you are doing a reverse image search. So video and image can be verified in a similar fashion. Just take a note of this uh, tool. There is a tool called there is a tool called Invid EU. Uh, you can have a Chrome extension. It has a lot of tools which I, which you can use. Uh, I'll just quickly show you. So I have this uh, Chrome extension here. I click on it. I open the toolbox, and you can see that it has video analysis tool. It can get you the key frames from that uh, video. Uh, Video analysis can tell you the details about the video, where it was uploaded, uh, which date it was uploaded, a lot of metadata that you can get of that picture of the video from, from this tool. Then it can give you the thumbnails, which you can do a reverse image search of. And, uh, and this works for videos from any platform, be it YouTube, be it Twitter, be it Facebook, be it Instagram. You can just use this tool. Uh, to, to get information about the photograph, when it was uploaded, who had uploaded it, what time it was uploaded, what are the comments on that photograph, so you can get all the information there. So I'm not showing you the operation of this tool, but you can you know find it for yourself. This is called Invid, and you can just check it for yourself. Right. Uh, so this was about uh, Invid, so web-based application, enhanced metadata that you can get. Uh, retrieve contextual information such as location if it can detect interesting comments, license rights, keyframes, and YouTube thumbnails or videos. It can extract still frames for you so you don't need to take any screen grab if you are verifying a video. Then useful features are there like magnified if you want to just magnify certain area of the picture and want to see if there is any text on it and if you want to read that, there is a tool for that. Then there is a tool for Twitter advanced search as well for image verification. Then there's another tip, 
some I, I don't know whether you have used this but you can use this tool uh, on google search so you can you can you know do a reverse image search and then you can also mention that you know if this picture was uploaded in last uh, one hour or 24 hours or past week or past month or past year and you can also customize custom uh, give a custom range of dates so suppose somebody is claiming that okay this picture is from uh, from from say march uh, 4th right so if you want to see that whether this picture had actually appeared before march 4th or not you can uh, you know mention the range custom range so this kind of uh, calendar you will get uh, in the two uh, you know uh, in, so you can just mention the date in the two uh, to uh, this 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 particular area and you can do a search and it will tell you if this picture had appeared before the specified date or not so you can add this time filter in search engine and it can you know show you so i, I was just talking about this photograph of some muslim uh, you know youth leaking uh, plates and bow, uh, bowls and also uh, utensils and it was from it was in circulation in july 31st on july 31st 2018 so this is not a recent photograph of course at least that you can find out if you add time filter in search engine then you can look for visual clues so the way you were trying to find out whether this picture is uh, you know relevant or not so you can find find out if the installations or landmarks are uh, you know, from the uh, from that place, from where this picture is claimed to be from, the clothes that people are wearing, the the photograph that I had shown you from Ukraine. If I would claim that okay, this is from Kolkata, you wouldn't believe it, right? So the clothes would will tell you, or the you know facial uh, expressions will tell you that whether these are for from a particular region or not. Then language, in case of video, try to listen to the language and find out what language they are speaking. If somebody is saying that okay, this is from Tamil Nadu, uh, but you see that you know some people are speaking in Bengali, so you can understand whether this is from you know Tamil Nadu or from Bengal or not. Then there may be banners, hoardings, signboards, which are you know there uh, in the in the picture. You can find out from which area uh, this this photograph is by looking at this banner, hoarding, signboard, number plate of the cars is very important clue. Which can tell you that you know from which region this is from weather. So somebody may tell you that okay, this this uh, incident had taken place in Diamond Harbor on say 26th of January, and you see that you know there was uh, there was heavy rain on in that uh, in that video or the picture. You can cross check whether on 26th January it rained in Hi Diamond Harbor or not, and then you can say okay, this is true or false. This may not be true because uh, probably. It was a sunny weather in uh, in Diamond Harbor on 26th of January, and this picture is showing that it's raining. So it may not be true. So these are kind of clues that you can find out. Then flag, logo, badge, and emblem. That also helps. Another important clue is comments on social media. So if you get to see any photograph, any video on social media, read through the comments, and sometimes people flag it there, saying that okay, I belong to this area, and nothing of that sort had happened, or you know. They can say, okay, I, I was there and it actually had happened. And you can get in touch with those you know, persons and verify, cross-check certain content. A few more tips. Check the URL, logo, and about a section of the website very carefully and find out the source of that particular content. At first glance, it may look familiar, but it is not. So it is Times Now has you know, the similar kind of uh, logo, but the picture that I'm showing you as parody site that is times wow or times how but at first glance it would look like okay this is from times now so be very very careful about the URL logo and go through the about a section to find out what kind of content they produce who they are who are the owner or the promoter of the website which is uh, you know putting out this news and don't share or forward or report until you are hundred percent sure of the authenticity of the information, please, please mention it. That the, this is the first rule of fact checking. That first, 
control your emotion don't share or forward a report until you know that this is 100% sure that you are 100% sure about the authenticity of the information so that's it from me always mention the sources don't write researchers claim and doctors say find out who are the researchers how many samples they had used to do their research whether this is published in some recognized uh, peer reviewed journal or not try to find all these things and mention it clearly in your report don't just say that researchers say that uh, you know the whole uh, uh, world will uh, perish in next 20 years who are the researchers it is important for you to mention and again do make corrections if you commit any mistake or fall for in fall for any fake news it increases your credibility so that's it from me any question i know i have taken you very fast but uh, if you have any question i'll be happy to answer them if you get stuck somewhere if you are um, you, you if, if you have if you haven't got anything just let me know i can answer them any question anything okay no question so i hope that you have got it and this was helpful i hope thank you sir it was a wonderful presentation thank you so much thank you thank you over to you thank Thank you, Sambit. Uh, as always, it's a, it's, it's a pleasure listening to you, and there is so much to learn from you. And uh, sure, uh, and I can understand from the students' point of view, all of them are having offline classes as well. And then to stay at these intense sessions, it can be a uh, very uh, difficult at times. But I'm sure there are some very, very important takeaways that they have, and uh, they understand the reason why, you know, we, uh, uh, Sambit is sitting in Pune, and, you know, I, I, and, and uh, you know, yesterday we had uh, Professor Amit Shogun Roy from Delhi and we had Professor Minal Chatterjee from uh, Dhenkanal. And again, you know, uh, Joya Chakraborty will be joining us from Tezpur tomorrow. So all of us are here because, you know, uh, uh, we, we understand that these are very, very important things. And uh, uh, thank you for your patience and thank you for, for uh, being present here. Uh, do ask questions. Our, our uh, contacts are there. And as you can understand that there is so much to do in journalism, one of the things that I would, uh, uh, again, you know, want to share and uh, is, is there on the chat box. It's, it's uh, called uh, uh, Google Power Searching. So some of you, uh, maybe the semester four CU students, uh, I, I've shared that with them already, but uh, others might not have seen that. So that is one thing that you can do. Uh, I, I hope you've all uh, filled up the, uh, thank you, Samit, for, for the uh, email. Uh, I, I hope you have all, uh, filled up the feedback form. Uh, we we uh, will meet tomorrow again at 7 p.m. exactly. We have one session by Monidiba Banerjee. Uh, she's been some of senior uh, colleague in, in television, and uh, we all know her. She'll be there for the first session tomorrow, and she'll be talking about presenting social issues. Then there'll be another session on presenting on women and children. Then we'll have uh, Professor S. N. Vera from Calcutta University and Dr. Uh, Manali Bhattacharya from St. Devi's University, Kolkata, for the validatory session. If there is anything that we can do, do let us know, and uh, we all will uh, continue with this, uh, these conversations uh, over different platforms. I'm sure you, you, you found a lot of interesting takeaways from here. Thank you again, and uh, does anyone have any question, any observations, anything to say? I'm sure you'll, you'll remember these, uh, you know, sessions uh, you know, in, in times to come. Believe me that, you know, maybe uh, six months from now, you'll be talking about how, you know, you had offline classes and then these online sessions and how some of these you still remember. Uh, thank you again, Shambit, for all your support. And we hope to uh, meet you at different places. Hopefully, when you are in Kolkata, we can have some kind of a offline session on this as well. And uh, Right, students, can we hear from uh, uh, any one of you about uh, anything? Okay, nobody wants to speak or does anyone? They must be tired also, I think. I hope that you have got it. So I've got some thank you messages. So I hope that you have got both of our sessions today uh, and, you know, have taken away something to, you know, use it in your future endeavors. So thank, thank you. you.
it comes Chishmita, Monica, Vidisha, thank you very much. Now we can all go for a very sumptuous dinner. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.